Hey guys, welcome back to Joe's RC Corner, and today we're just going to be doing a quick video on uh, just a few uh, tips and tricks to uh, doing some covering. Uh, so we're going to be covering the uh, bottom half of the uh, horizontal stabilizer uh, on the CAP 232. So uh, stay tuned if you're interested, and uh, we'll do a quick video on this. It shouldn't be very long. But uh, I'll give you guys a little insight on to how I like to uh, do my covering. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, so welcome back to the channel, and uh, like I said today, we're going to be working on covering the bottom half of the uh, horizontal stabilizer and uh, elevators. Uh, I'm not going to do all of the covering on camera, uh, mostly because it's very time-consuming already, and adding the complexity of trying to get everything in the camera shot uh, just adds to that complexity, so we're going to do a, a fairly quick video on just uh, doing the bottom half. So if you remember in the pictures, I'm going to be doing the bottom of the wing and the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer and elevator in uh, the blue and white checkers here. So the blue and white checkers, uh, these ones are about one inch uh, squares. So we have to try to get these lined up when we transition into the elevator from the stab. The other thing that I also wanted to do was I trial fit and aligned the stab on the fuselage with the wing to make sure everything was straight, everything was square, um, because the center section here where the, this mounts into the fuselage is going to be glued to the fuselage. So, we don't want to have to peel that covering off again later. So to simplify things, I aligned everything properly um, and then I marked where the fuselage came into play. Um, by doing that, uh, we can avoid having, to have the, avoid having the covering go too close on there. Uh, so I will, I'll probably go in maybe about an eighth of an inch, uh, but leave plenty of wood here in the center section for this to glue to the surfaces in the, uh, in, in the fuselage. So, uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go off, si off the camera here and I'm gonna want to uh, cut out the panels that I need to cover the, uh, both the left and right side. Um, and I'm gonna try to have a little bit extra on there uh, and have the elevators cut out as well so that way it saves us a little bit of time. But uh, usually what I like to do is cover the main fir uh, surface first and then line up the covering and then cut that out for the elevator. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, so stay tuned guys, we'll be right back. Okay guys, so I have my iron over here uh, heating up. Uh, I don't know the temperature. Uh, I usually just go by what the, what the covering is telling me because every, every type of covering, every pattern, uh, all seems to be slightly different. So I kind of just go by what it's telling me by when I heat it up and if it's shrinking too much, I turn it down. If it's uh, not, um, if it's not adhering, then I turn it up. Um, so the first things we're going to be doing here um, is we're going to be taking the bottom surface here because you always start with your covering from the bottom of the surface first, and then wrap the top over. Okay, uh, that's how I do it. That's how I've been taught how to do it over the years. Uh, so that's basically how I still do it. Um, so there you go. Um, next thing you need is a tack cloth. Um, what this does is it's a, it's a sticky cloth and it cleans off the wood and takes off all of the imperfections. Or not, I'm sorry, not imperfections. Takes off all the uh, sand and sawdust and so on uh, off the, the wood. So that way you have a nice clean wood surface to adhere the covering too, so you won't have anything underneath. Now I do have this one marked, this is the bottom. Okay, so that's cleaned. Uh, one thing that I use for a, because uh, they don't make balsa right any longer, what I use to seal the wood and sand it 
is a, a water-based polyurethane spray can. I spray over it and then sand it and then spray it one more time. And what this stuff does is it leaves a little bit of a residue on this wood and um, it, it's not really a heat activated glue, but the heat does soften it and then helps with the adhesion, adhesion, adhesion. <laughs> it helps with the adhesion of the uh, cover into the surface. All right. So we're going to make sure that these are fairly straight in line with the, uh, with the airframe. So I'm not worried about this line here. I'm going to overlap that, but I'm going to mark it. And then I'm going to cut this ahead of time to what angle I need to meet up with this surface here. So what, we'll, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to line it up like this. Okay, so that way my lines are straight and in line there, okay? And then you take your Sharpie, and I'm gonna go in just a little bit on this. And same thing over here. But that mark should have been on the covering, <laughs> not on the wood. Uh, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, use a uh, straight edge, some sort. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be in that same angle. So then we'll take our scissors here and we'll just cut this nice and straight. And it helps to have really good, really sharp scissors to do this. And this covering will dull the uh, the scissors over time, very similar to uh, fiberglass, only takes a little bit longer for it to do this one. So if you have really good sharp scissors, they're good. All right, so now, now that we have that cut out, we can kind of align this to where we're just over that edge a little bit. And we have enough to go around the end on all sides, right? Now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and pull that backing off, which sometimes can be a pain. Uh, I've tried some tape, I've tried different things. Some covering peels off easier than others. And then we'll just lay it down, line it up. Remember we want these aligned And then what I will do is I will tack a spot first, just one spot, and then kind of pull it and tack it over here as well. Okay. Now I don't want that uh, black on there, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that up because I don't want to get it on, on there. So just have a little bit of alcohol here. Then, We'll wipe off that uh, marker right here. All right, so now that I have those two ends tacked, I want to make sure everything is straight and that it stays straight. So I'm going to tack the other corner now, the other uh, side of it right on here. And this just helps ensure that everything stays where you put it as you heat up the rest of that. Now, I don't use a sock. Some people use socks. I don't tend to use uh, a sock to uh, protect my cover, and I probably should. I've never really had too much of an issue. Uh, if you have any residue on this, you can usually get it cleaned off pretty quick and easy with a paper towel and some alcohol on it. I don't really slide it much on here. Try to keep uh, everything nice and flat and straight. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out this, this corner here. So you grab your scissors. And you cut it towards that corner. 
like so. Now this piece will fold over this way, this one this way, and so on and so on. All right, so now everything folds around nicely. And this is something that took a long time to start figuring out exactly how to do this. Uh, one of the things that you want to be careful with when you're messing with checkers or patterns is you don't want to over shrink it too soon. Uh, that will distort your checkers, for instance, or your pattern, whatever it is. You don't want to distort it. So you try to keep a, lot of, a little bit of tension on it as you're pulling it across and ironing it down. Um, okay, like that. And then finish just going across there. And then I'm going to do this edge back here. I know this is kind of hard to see, uh, but I also don't want to mess up my covering either. So, Okay, now that I have that part done, usually I would use my razor uh, blade here, but I don't think I have one. Uh, hold on just a second, guys. Let me see. Oh, wait, here we go. I'm not sure how sharp it is, though, so let me uh, try it and we'll see. So what I'll do is I'll take the, a straight edge, just a simple straight edge. I'll lay it right onto the wood. And if this one is sharp enough, should be able to get it started here somewhere. I don't believe this one's going to be sharp enough to to get it going here. All right, bear with me guys. See if I have another one in here somewhere. I got one for my planer here that I can use. It's brand new, so let's try that. There we go. And then you just slide it right along that piece of wood to get that straight edge. Okay, go as far as you can before you hit the end. And then what we're going to do on that end is take the scissors and cut it on the other angle here. We're going to do the same thing here on this piece. Because what I want to do is, is have the blue overlap that on the top side. Okay. And we will do the same thing on this one. We're going to roll this over now. But we don't want to roll it all the way because the blue is going to have to overlap that a little bit. So I just want to get it up and around just so we have enough of an overlap between the two colors of the covering there. Okay, and then you're going to take that blade again. And you're going to do the same thing. Put it flush. Get it started and just go straight down to get this to cut to the right shape. Just down to the end and then again 45 on the out so that way we can uh, clean that end up. Then you just finish rolling this over the rest of the way just like so. Okay, now we're going to fold up the ends, 
Since they're straight edges, it's not a big deal. It's very easy to do. I'm going to cut this one on a 45 here. And because this is a bevel, I'm going to cut it there. And we're going to cut these really short because they just need to go over the end. All right. And this one's a rounded. So again, just one cut there, one cut there. Fold this piece back on the outside, and then we're going to wrap this in. Now for this one, you might want it a little bit higher because you want to shrink a little bit as you're pulling it in and, and tacking it. Okay? And then same thing on these ends here and on that end. Okay, now you have this piece here that folds back over like on a wrapping paper. And you just seal that baby on just like this. And then same thing with the razor blade again, cut that nice and straight and then just seal that end over that little bit that's left there. Okay, just like that. Tack this down a little bit more there. Then on the end, I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter. I'm going to cut it in that angle here, here, here. Hold it back, flip it over, same as before. And same as before on this one, bring it up and over. And shrink that on there. Same thing again with the blade. And then seal that edge. So now, you're probably wondering, this isn't stuck in the middle. You're correct. I'm going to go ahead and lower the heat just a little bit. Or actually, I'm going to up the heat a little bit, I'm sorry. And now we're going to go over it very gentle. Let me clean off my... What you can do, which I actually find easier, is you take your heat gun. Okay, welcome back again. Sorry about that. I had to go get a uh, sock here that I use. Because uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the heat gun here. And we're going to do a little bit of shrinking and pressing. Well, there you go guys, that's how I do my covering. And that's all nicely sealed and left on there really good, it's all glued. And then when we do the blue on the top, I'm going to bring it up and around. And I'm going to bring it, probably bring it about right here, along this edge here. And that will get that nice straight leading edge blue on the checkers. So we'll just do the same thing on this side, and then we'll do the blue on these. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more when I'm done with this side. I'll talk a little bit align the blue uh, checkers on the elevator uh, on this side. All right, stay tuned, guys. <clears throat> okay, guys, so now as you can see, we got both sides of these covered with the uh, checkers on the bottom. Uh, top is going to be the blue. But before I go to the blue, I want to go ahead and do a quick, uh, uh, quick look at how we're going to match up these checkers uh, with the elevators. So I'm going to take one of these elevators here. I'm going to take the pins out. I'm going to lay this flat on the table and we'll line these up, right? So this is how I line them up. There might be better ways, might be easier ways, I'm not sure, but this is how I do it. And then I'm going to pull this amount of covering out. And what we're going to do We'll line these up on top, actually. I apologize about that. We're going to slide it over to where I can get the full elevator in place. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to line up the checkers like so. Okay? Then we're going to take Line the checkers up. We can do it a little bit lower, but not too much. I want to make sure I have enough here. So if I go down to here, I'll barely have enough over here, but we'll, might still work. So let's go ahead and we'll line these up. Nope, that won't work. Okay, so we're going to have to slide up to about here. And then what we'll do is we'll take the elevator we're going to trace it, well, I'm going to give it a little extra, so we're going to say this line, and we're going to say up here, and we're going to say here, okay? And that should give me enough. And I'm going to go ahead and take this one off. Now, I'm going to say here, 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 okay? Now that I have that, I'm going to take my scissors and we're going to cut this piece out on the lines that I marked. Now we're going to take our, our, vertical, our horizontal stabilizer again. And the piece that we cut this out for, I have this labeled as the bottom. All right, so then what we do is we take our, uh, the peel off the back. And how I like to do this is I'll lay this down flat on the table. I'll put this on top of it. And then I'm going to take this covering and I'm going to line up my checkers with the ones on the stab, okay? I'm gonna take my iron and I'm gonna tack it. There. There, just basically at every corner here. So it doesn't move on me, right? And then we'll lift it away. Then I'm gonna go back and over it and just make sure I tacked it all And now I'm going to just tack it on all of the surface areas that I can touch. Okay, and then the same as we did on the other side, we're going to take that razor blade right on the edge there and just lay it on top of the wood nice and flat and just follow the, the top surface here. Nice and straight, okay? Take your scissors, finish off those cuts. Okay, set that to the side because those are good trim pieces. Now we're just going to finish sealing that around this edge, just like so. Just make sure that's nice and sealed so 
it doesn't come up. Okay. I'm going to take the center section here. I'm going to cut this 45 angle here again. Boom. And then on this side here, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to do a straight line and then a 45 from that. Okay, and I'll show you what I'm doing here. So then we'll take this piece and we'll fold it up and over. And we'll tack that in place. Okay. Again, take your blade and slide that along the surface there to cut that in the straight line. Okay, and we'll wrap that around. And of course this part here just gets slowly worked in. Because this piece now is going to roll around just a little bit around that leading edge there, right? Just like so. Get your blade and trim that off again. Then just make sure that's sealed down. Okay. We'll get this side straight. And then cut, and then straight, and then trim. Fold this back. We're going to work this one down and in here. Same thing back here, work it in. And then fold this over. And we're gonna tack the center. Just work that one around. Take your blade again, right along that wood surface there, cut that out, and then just finish tacking that along right inside there, just like so. Now we're going to work on the inside here and the hinge points. Just get this tack down here. Nice and flat. Of course, we're just doing the same thing we just did on the other side. We're going to go up and over the bevel and then cut it right before it touches the top of the surface there on the opposite side. We'll fold it back down over this side now, just on the other side of the bevel. And you're going to pull a little bit while you're doing that and, and do a pull in motion because that's going to pull the cover and tight along that side as well. Now, like I've mentioned before, there's other ways of doing this. This is the way I've done it and it works for me. Uh, I'm always interested to hear other ways of uh, doing covering. 
Uh, I know there's a lot of other guys that do it much better than I do, uh, but uh, like I said, this is how I've been doing it for years. And it seems to work okay. I get uh, decent results out of it. I'm sure I could do better, uh, as everyone can do better. Everyone can learn uh, a new way of doing this. Um, but, like I said, this has worked for me. Uh, and I think it looks pretty good once it's done. Just got to be careful. If the wood is, is not in good shape and not cleaned well, then that's going to show on the other side. So just keep that in mind. Starting off with a clean wood surface is always the best way to get a decent result uh, with your covering. And I am definitely guilty of not doing that entirely. So uh, I don't always start with the cleanest of surfaces underneath my covering. So you get what you get, and sometimes it's uh, not so good if you don't uh, prep that surface well. But uh, one of the main things that I like to do, like I said, uh, to try to get it as good as I can is sand and then seal it, seal that wood. And the final part of it is getting that dust off of it. So just uh, little words of advice from, uh, from me there. So now before we go ahead and shrink this and go any further, we're going to take a look and uh, as you can see, the checkers match, uh, trying to hold it with two hands here, here we go. The checkers match pretty darn good there, so uh, pretty, not, pretty good, uh, not too bad, I'm pretty happy with that and uh, what we'll do is we'll do the blue on the top side and then we'll be able to shrink that in. Um, Actually, no, I apologize. The top side is not going to be blue on this. Um, I forgot. I'm doing a pattern on the top. And uh, so we're going to have to look at how I'm going to do that one. Uh, so uh, stay tuned, guys, and I'll uh, be right back. Okay, guys, so we've reached our ending point for the day. I've pretty much got the, uh, the, both elevators and the uh, stab covered with their base colors. I do have to put the designs on the top still. But what I want to show you really quick is how I make my holes uh, for all the control horns and for the, um, uh, the hinges. So what I do is I grab my soldering iron here. Let me back up a little bit. And I look for the hole. I found one there. And I just heat it up and stick it through. And that creates a nice sealed hole for the control horn to go in, or I'm sorry, for the, for the hinge to go in. And then I take the elevators and I do have my holes already set up here for my, um, for my control horns. So I take that soldering iron again and I just poke a hole right on through those as well. And nice sealed hole now for my control horn to go through without having to worry about my covering coming loose around those locations. Just like that. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll put a uh, test, we'll test fit the elevators here on this side as well. And see how those all look because once I get this all lined up, uh, I will need to go back and we're gonna have to put our trim colors on the stab here once we know uh, once I cut those out on the out of my templates there there we go so now you got the uh, the top is all white right now bottom checkers all match so at least that part is done uh, so we'll set this is off to the side until we're ready to glue this in place uh, this uh, counterbalance is catching a little bit, so I'm going to have to file that a little bit maybe and uh, just put a little patch there in the corner so oil doesn't get in there. 
because we can't have that rub in there. So, but uh, other than that, uh, this side is fine. This side is good. We'll be uh, ready to go and uh, move on to the next step. So tail feathers are all covered now. So uh, next step will probably be uh, getting the control linkages inside the fuselage. Uh, now that all my uh, parts have come in, uh, and uh, we'll get the servos mounted, get all the uh, linkages mocked up, and uh, trial fit where everything goes, and then maybe start covering those portions of the aircraft and start doing some final assembly on that as well. So uh, uh, stay tuned uh, for the next portion of this video, which will probably be for this. Uh, this is uh, just a little prompt to in the evening um, after work. So we'll, uh, we'll reconvene on the weekend, so uh, stay tuned, and uh, we'll get going on it, uh, continue working on it this weekend. So stay tuned, guys. Hey, guys, and uh, welcome back. Uh, Joe's RC Corner here, and uh, I wanted to do a, an update. Uh, I know I, we did a little bit of video in regards to when I was doing some covering on the aircraft already. Um, but I went ahead off camera and did the and finished up the wings and the uh, horizontal stab elevator and rudder and ailerons. So all of those are done. Uh, we're going to be moving to the fuselage now. Uh, however, with the covering, we're going to wait on that yet because we want to get all the control linkages from where the servos are going to be all the way to the tail uh, through the controls uh, and get the push rods basically in there. So that way, once it's covered, it'll be easier to get that all uh, completed. So uh, just a little update on, on how everything came out. So Govern went out okay. Uh, there are definitely some tiny mistakes throughout here um, in regards to the, uh, the design. Uh, but all in all, uh, I'm very happy with how it came out. Uh, it, it definitely is going to um, uh, look very nice in the air. So I'm not too concerned about the tiny mistakes that, that have been made uh, along the way in that. Um, but so the first thing we're going to be getting done next is we're going to be going ahead and uh, we're going to be installing our uh, 440 uh, push rods, um, the guides, uh, basically, into the fuselage uh, and add a little bit of um, extra support throughout the tail section to support those, uh, those push rods so that there's, there's no issues there. Uh, with them flexing uh, when the when they get deflected or when the tail feathers are deflected so we're going to work on that next once that's completed then we're going to go ahead and start covering the fuselage uh, getting some of the final assembly uh, installing the landing gear uh, finishing up with uh, the priming and sanding getting the engine mounted and so on so uh, stay tuned guys and uh, we're going to keep uh, moving we're going to move over to the bench with the fuselage so that we can start doing the uh, linkages inside that fuselage there. So stay tuned, guys. Okay, guys, so um, what I'm working on right now is I'm working on getting these uh, servos installed. So as you can see, I got the, uh, that's going to be the rudder servo there in the center. And then uh, I have two elevator servos, and they're the Corona servos uh, on the uh, left and right hand side. Thinking about maybe making a mount somewhere in that area uh right up over here to uh house the elevator servo or, i'm sorry the throttle servo uh which would uh have a push rod going up into the throttle point there so um there we are right now and then i'm using these uh nye rods uh the guide tubes that are going to go all the way to the back and uh we'll have the elevator servos and connected like so. Now that uh, red tube isn't going to be moving and it's going to be on the other side as well and then these are the exits here for the rudder pull pull system and I did get those mounted as well uh, so as you can see here's the pull pull cable uh, li linkage there. Uh, so we're going to keep moving on and we're going to get this, uh, get those servos mounted in the right spots, get the push rods, uh, guide tubes uh, mounted, and uh, we'll go ahead and move forward with that. So uh, stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. Okay, guys. So we're back here on the, uh, looking at the servo installation in the fuselage. So as you can see here, 
We have uh, all three servos installed. We have the, uh, um, that'll be the right aileron, or I'm sorry, right elevator, left elevator, and the rudder pull-pull in the middle there. Uh, the control rods, I had some trouble getting these in, but I finally got them installed. So we have the, um, I added a brace here, and then those rods go back through the fuselage. Another brace back in here, and I got to clean these up. But then there's the section here where they exit, and then go into the elevator, and of course over on this side as well. Uh, well, like I said, I got to clean those up. I'm going to shorten those uh, so we have the rods uh, coming out here. Uh, but uh, as you can see, no more friction. I had some issues with friction, uh, a little bit too much. And they were binding up, but now we got them nice and clean. We have them crisscrossed here in the middle. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to run the elevator pull pull. Um, I'm sorry, the rudder pull pull system. Uh, I'm going to add two guides uh, in here to allow for the cables to run through. And then they're going to be uh, free to move all the way through there. So we've got to test that out, uh, make sure everything lines up properly. Uh, but these line right up to the elevators now on both sides. And uh, we'll be putting, um, uh, planning on putting a solder on uh, clevis in there. So, and same on the other side. All right, so uh, keep on working. Hey guys, welcome back to the next day here on the uh, uh, CAP 232 build. But really quickly, I did want to just do a quick uh, unboxing of something really cool that we just got. Uh, my son has now reached the age of nine, and uh, that's the same age that I was when I started. And my dad uh, got me into model airplane flying. Now my son's already been uh, driving RC cars for uh, a couple of years now, um, but it's time to move on to uh, maybe aircraft. So. Uh, for his birthday uh, the other day, we went ahead and, and uh, we got him set up with a new new transmitter. So let's set this aside here so we can get to the bench. <clears throat> so what we went and got him was a Tyrannus X9 Lite. He's still nine, he's only nine years old, he's got smaller hands, and uh, we've been finding that the bigger radios, like my uh, G, uh, G2 uh, Spectrum radio, it's just a little bit too large for him to be able to, to hold the sticks properly. Um, so, I saw this and I uh, thought it would be a pretty neat little radio for him. Uh, I did also have the uh, X uh, Lite Pro. Uh, but I sold that one. I wasn't really keen on, on the handle, uh, on the um, game controller style. Um, and uh, I wanted him to have a radio that he could grow with over time. So this looked like a good option. So let's go ahead and open this, this box up. Now I ordered it on Amazon. Uh, didn't go through anyone specific. <clears throat> and it's not the Pro or the S version. It's the standard uh, original one. Um, which, for him, that's fine. Uh, we're not worried about the Hall Effect gimbals or anything. Um, but we ordered it from... Uh, so, Progressive RC is uh, the Amazon seller that I got it to. Um, not sure how well that's focusing in. There we go. Uh, so, Progressive RC is who I got it from. Um, on Amazon.com, I will put the link in the description for you guys. So if you're interested in this radio, uh, now there are a lot of adults that, you've, that use this radio and I'll be honest with you, the first time I put this in my hands, it felt really good for even with someone with big hands. Um, so I was kind of surprised. Now what's neat, it comes with these little gimbal protectors, which is nice. Now I have opened this up already and showed it to my son. Uh, but we're just doing this as a unboxing for you guys anyway, just to make sure everything worked beforehand. Now, um, it uses the, uh, and there's a lot of reviews on this already out there, so I'm not going to really go in, 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 in extreme depth on this. But uh, 18650s, I have a bunch of these since we're uh, 
using them on a lot of different things. They're, uh, they're lithium ion. Now, because this is the older version, it does not have the built-in charging, which I, I, you know, it's okay. Um, but what we'll do is we purchased a um, 18650 USB charger that comes with two batteries also on Amazon for about 20 bucks. Uh, so those will work fine. Plus I have some Samsung ones uh, locally here, or already here that I'll be able to go ahead and, and plug them in uh, into that charger as well. Uh, he also modified, we also wanted to uh, put a little bit of a personal touch onto it. So we already had these red uh, switch um, caps. So we went ahead and added those. Um, also have some uh, rubber um, silicone uh, toppers that we're going to put on here. So like for this one, for instance, we're going to have this one set up as a kill switch on the motor all the time. So we'll put a red one on there so that way he knows that's what that is. We have uh, the rest of these are all three position switches up here, which is really nice. Only one two position and one momentary. Uh, and then it has one pot. <clears throat> But for what for him starting out, it's really all he needs. Um, we figured he'd like the blue, so we got that. We will be ordering the um, the module that goes on the back so that he can run both on my Spectrum receivers and um, the Access and the AS, uh, ASS, ASCT. Uh, their other protocol. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, for 89 bucks, that's not a bad deal. And uh, he's going to get years of use out of this before he needs to upgrade. I mean, it has 60 models. Uh, I think it handles up to uh, 12 or 16 channels. Um, and I'm pretty sure eventually down the road, they'll probably come out with Hall Effect gimbal upgrades for this, uh, if they haven't already. So if down the road we want to do that, we can do that. Um, but I've had a couple different Free Sky radios over time, over the years, and uh, I've always been pretty happy with them. I've never really had any issues with them, um, especially for the price. So, yeah, so there you go. Um, and then we'll be building a, uh, a plane for them uh, probably in the next couple of uh, videos or so. We may get into building an airplane um, for him. It, we were going to look at like a regular trainer. But uh, I want something that he can grow with, so we're, I have a kit already up in the, in the closet. It's a uh, Cosmo 25. Not sure if anyone's familiar with it. Um, to be honest with you, I wasn't familiar with it until I received it. Uh, but it's a shoulder wing airplane, tricycle gear. Um, pretty straightforward airplane. Uh, nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Um, but it'll be a good start in airplane that will grow a little bit with him. And uh, I think what we're looking at is maybe doing the, uh, the FR Sky stabilizer uh, receiver. I believe it's the S6. And uh, that one has auto level. So we'll be able to program on a switch here um, different modes to where you have a, uh, either auto level by itself, which would be a good starting point for him, and then you can uh, progressively get to um, no gyro, basically. So I think that's a good option for him to start with. And uh, that airplane will be a nice wood kit for him to get started with as well. And uh, we want to share that journey with you. So uh, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll get going back on the cap. So uh, stay tuned, guys. We're going to go ahead and change gears. And we're going to pull that fuselage over here, and we're going to start covering that. All right, guys, so I want to do a little bit on uh, how I'm doing my covering on the fuselage here. So um, let me turn this a little bit on its side so you can see. Uh, so I cut a piece to fit the um, empennage of the fuselage here. And uh, I tacked it in two places, at the front and the back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tacking it all the way around. And then I grab my heat gun and I shrink it and press it down on. This is how I do it. Like I said in the previous video when we were doing the tail, uh, it's, everyone does this a little bit differently. But generally, uh, this is how I do it. And uh, it's been working. So here we go. And before you move on, make, do make sure that it is sealed onto that edge. Because once you start shrinking it, it will start to pull pieces in weird ways. So you want to get sure, make sure that it's nice and flat here. 
and tacked really good. We'll worry about shrinking and getting wrinkles out after, and they tend to always come out. Uh, this covering, like I said, is pretty good. Um, it's it stay it's a little bit softer than monocoat, so it goes around curves really well when you shrink it around. Uh, and I don't tend to get any any interest in uh, marks here. Just slowly and surely. You'd rather have the piece down sealed tight opposed to having uh, wrinkles that you have to try to get out later. So, And you can leave a little bit of a wrinkle in the center section. That part's fine because you're going to be shrinking that down anyway. All right. Just play around with your heat. Um, I don't know what temperature it is. This is uh, an expensive one. I don't have a thermometer for it, so... All right guys, so I'm on the home stretch here on the cover and on the fuselage, so I wanted to bring you guys back in just for this last piece here that's going to be on the, that's being put on the, the uh, fuselage here. So the rest of the uh, fuselage was covered pretty much the same manner as I did the bottom, which I showed you, and the uh, horizontal stabilizer also, like I showed you. Um, but this, uh, Whenever you have two colors that meet together, um, it is sometimes kind of tricky to try to get that, that blend uh, just right uh, to have those blend together. So what I like to do sometimes to separate colors and also give it a little more character is uh, cut out one inch strips of your uh, trim color and we'll add that between those two lines and see, I can cut these perfectly straight on, uh, on my t cutting table, on my mat, and uh, uh, it, it just adds that nice little pop of color between the white and the blue, and it'll also ha hide any um, uh, imperfections in that slice that I had there. So um, as you can see on this side, it's already done, looks really good, splits those two colors, and it goes together with the red, white, and blue that I have on the wing already. Uh, as well. So, um, also, uh, just wanted to let you guys see, I got the pilot installed, painted and installed. Uh, this was a 3D printed guy that I got. And then uh, 3D printed also the uh, instrument panel. I made a little glare shield and uh, I'll sh take some pictures of that up close. It's very similar to how I did the uh, Giles 202. So, but let, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this piece uh, attached. I want to make sure that I have enough over this tail and enough to go up here. And I'm not going all the way up to the top up here. And part of that is the, can the cowl actually goes way back here, so you won't even see this anyway. So uh, I'm going to use that as a spot to tack it. And then we're going to go ahead and just start pulling it a little bit at a time placing it exactly where I want it. And then we're just going to run the iron over it like so. Okay, so now that's on. And as you can see, the fuselage is now fully covered, ready to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut the camera off for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and, well, I'll take that back. I'm going to go ahead and put the canopy on with you guys watching, so uh, stand by. Okay, so I got grabbed the canopy over there, and I've already trimmed and painted the uh, the outside edge around this. Um, of course, I dropped it a couple times and got a few chips, but we're going to run with it because uh, I don't feel like repainting. Uh, but basically, the canopy is going to go on just like that. We have the canopy, we have the cockpit inside there. It's all decked out. Not sure if you'll be able to see it, but uh, I'll take a picture of it and uh, we'll po post it either one of the corners over here or somewhere, okay? So uh, watch out for that one. Uh, but yeah, so here we go. There's the canopy. And I'm going to go ahead and mock everything up uh, and re reinstall everything. Um, ca the, the cowl is not painted yet, but uh, you'll be able to get an idea of what it's going to look like with the uh, cowl. 
Uh, basically, this red stripe is going to continue onto the cow and uh, do some. Um, one way or another, it's going to terminate uh, either on a forward uh, 45 down or maybe it just wrap it around. I'm not sure yet. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, okay, guys, so my battery is dying, so, but I wanted to do a quick uh, overview. Here's the plane. It's covered. It's ready to move on to the next steps, which is going to be finishing installing the radio, the, the engine, uh, and uh, putting in all the clearance holes on the cow and uh, getting everything finished and paint and painted and buttoned up. So without further ado, here it is. Mm -hmm.